And now, the judges selection for the new Miss America of 1983, Miss Washington, D.C. so much. Okay, now listen up. Look here. Um, I want my fur coat and my Cadillac Seville, please. Um, I want my uh, scholarship to dental school. Hey, wait, wait, wait a minute. See, you promised me, see, this wardrobe for a whole year. You promised me a double freezer with a complete cowl in it. You see, I want my pedicure, I want my manicure, and I want my dentist cure. What the? She's doing Mm -hmm. You promised me some contact Cut lenses, my breast job, my Cut nose job. Cameras. And you promised me Put my 60 car. acres and a mule, Put and I want it car. now. No, wait a minute. You can't say that. What? Wait, what? what? No. I can say anything I want to, oh, honey. Wait a minute. This is me... television. Fuck you. Listen, you promised me this shit. Just wait one moment, young lady. No, you getting on my nerves. Just like that Mississippi. She's been a nut up my ass all week long. No. Now, just wait I want one. This shit now. Sense of humor, I'm not kidding. Lois Bromfield. Hey, Lois, what'd you do to your hair? Were you caught in a wind tunnel? Karen Hartman. Karen, no, no cleavage, no nothing. What are you holding your dress up with? Nancy Parker, talented lady, bevy of characters. I hear she's schizoid. Melissa Harrison. Oh my god, that's me! That's me! Debbie, Jean, ah, what a fox. Hey, Deb, who'd you sleep with to get on this show? <laughs> Judy Dole, what a kick, funny gal. Judy, are those pigtails? I'm nauseous. Ladies and gentlemen, Lois Bromfield. Hey, look at all the beers on this table. My God, you ordered a six pack or what? That's great. How come you're not drinking beer? I saw a girl burp the other night in a restaurant drinking beer. It was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my life. I mean, she's all dressed up real nice, and she burped really loud. I mean, and then she turned to her boyfriend and went, Pardon me. <laughs> like it was adorable or something, you know? I felt like going up to her and saying, Maybe you'll puke in the car later. Do you know what the worst thing in the world for me is, though? The worst thing is when you go out on a date with somebody you like and you're nervous and you can't eat normally. I mean, you just, everything that you do normally, you can't do. Like, when I'm out with a fella and you're sitting at a restaurant and you're kind of nervous, you can never eat like you do at home, you know, like a pig woman. And, um, <laughs> it's true, though. Now, don't any of you gals try to tell me differently, because I know, because I know, I have friends who tell me, you know, they're sitting there, and this happened to me the other night, and I was sitting there, and I was thinking, God, I wanted to be a pig woman so bad, because my, I was so hungry, and you know when you're by yourself at home, I mean, you can just go home and go, mm, food, <laughs> but, but when you're at a nice restaurant, you know, you're sitting there, and it's all nice, and you know that nice sound your stomach makes? This happened to me the other night, I'm sitting there, and my stomach was real empty, so, about two hours after dinner, I hadn't eaten anything, because I was afraid to be a human being, and so... And I was afraid to get like a black thing stuck here. Have you ever done that? You want to kill yourself. You get a black thing stuck here and all night you're going, <laughs> And then he goes, what is that? Do I have to wear one of those? What is it? But the worst thing is, you're sitting there and your stomach's real empty, you know? You know that nice sound? You're driving along in the car and it's all quiet and all of a sudden your stomach goes, I want some food now. You get real embarrassed and he goes, what was that? I go, what was what? What was what? Come on, food, let's go, big woman. I saw a hamburger place, food. <laughs> so awful but you know that great feeling when you finally get home and you can finally be a pig woman you go into your bedroom you change into your eating clothes oh. Oh. and then like a real lady you go into the kitchen unhinge your jaw and tip back the fridge that's a nice look too that's a nice 
so awful. Dating is awful. Shopping is awful. It's the end of the world. I wanted to buy some shoes today. I want to go back to this because this was truly a nightmare. I wanted to buy some shoes. Now, I have these huge boots on made for monsters, but I have big feet, you know? Now, I don't know about you gals. What size are your feet? Like a five, right? An eight. That's a boat. <laughs> Her shoe goes by. Bah, bah. People waving. But, um, what size? You have little feet, don't you? <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> Do you have little feet? Big glasses, little tiny pins. And when you run, you stick into the ground, right? I know. But I have friends with little feet, you know, and you can buy shoes. When you go to a shoe store and you got small feet, it's easy. I'm telling you this. This is the truth. You're walking by and you're looking in and you can see your little tiny shoes. They never display a 10 in a window, first of all. Have you ever seen a 10 in a window? No, no, unless they're displaying all the other shoes inside of it. But you'll never see. It's true. And I'm walking by, and I've got these big feet, you know, and I'm walking by, and you're standing in front of the window going, hey, hey, shoes, <laughs> you know. And you start to feel sort of big, you know, your toes are touching the store, your heels are touching your car, you know that feeling? <laughs> Won't you go into store? And little tiny girls with little feet are passing you by, going, bada, bada, watch out for the giant, bada, bada, walking in. <laughs> and then you got to walk into the store, then you got to walk into the store, pick up a size five off the shelf, walk up to the clerk and say, got this in a ten? <laughs> And the clerks always make you feel really bad by saying, Oh, a 10? No problem. Hey, Steve, do you want to back that 10 in? <laughs> Are you in a good mood now? What do you, how many drinks have you had? Have you had a lot of drinks? <laughs> Two or three. You know, the personality changes. You know, you can be a gal dressed up nice going into a nightclub, and after about two or three drinks, like, Where's the fucking party? <laughs> who writes that stuff in the bathroom. That's what I want to know about. Now, you gals out there, I know. You know, I go back into that bathroom every night and I look and I see all this rude stuff written on the walls. And then I come on stage and I see these nice people all dressed, very respectable. <laughs> you know, and sitting there going, oh my, oh, she said fuck. Oh. Now, you know, I know what happens. You know, somebody's sitting here dressed up and they go, excuse me, I, I'm just going to go into the bathroom for a moment. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Maybe I'll be real later. And then they get up, and they go into the bathroom very nicely, and maybe there's somebody standing there, and they go, Could I blow your hairbrush? And thanks. Oh, I love you. I think it's really cute. Then, and they get lots of hair on the brush. Then they go into the bathroom, they sit down, they close the door, they lock it, and they take a pen out and go, I fucked everybody! <laughs> One more time. One more time. Oh, I'm at dinner. Look, we've been negotiating this for three weeks. How many times are we going to go over the same ground? Yeah. Till we get it ironed out. Look, oh, this isn't just on. another prostitute strike. Don't you know what's going on out there? Don't you know you've turned San Francisco into a war zone? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mayor, fine person. Your Honor. Yes, Meredith. What is it? Any news? It's horrible. It's the men. They run wild with desire. Good. Now, now, they're exposing themselves on the streets. Good. This morning, they looted all the porno shops. They grabbed all the broad dolls. They even stormed your house. Those men are desperate. Excuse me, I better get back out there now. Ladies, I am begging you. You've got to get back out on the street. No. The man needs you. Huh. Let him fuck cake. <laughs> we ain't going out here. We're good and ready. No, we're yeah. not. All right, we're going to get this settled and now. Yeah. Okay, we've already covered paid vacations, yeah, yeah. retirement benefits, and a credit union. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's get down to the real issues. Uh, All right. First of all, we want more straight guys in San Francisco. Great girl. Yay. You are asking the impossible. Look, our business is down 15% in the last three years. Laverne, get the chart. Alrighty. This is love. Lord, Laverne, what is yeah. it? Come on. Now, as you can see, the gross income from impromptu 
population. <laughs> Minus overhead and miscellaneous expenditures has shown a marked decline over the previous fiscal year, 81, 82 of some 15.3%. Which brings us to slightly under $2 a head. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> Thanks, Laverne. Now, how do you expect a girl to make a living in a city where she can't even get a date? Yeah. yeah. Listen. Listen, we've tried bringing in straight guys. The fog just uh. does something to them. I'm <laughs> Their missile won't launch. Oh, missile? What is it? I don't know what you're talking You know about. what I mean. If, if their uh, compass won't uh, point north. If their alfalfa won't sprout. So you mean if they just was flown? You got it. Whoa! Oh, come on! It's ridiculous. Look, how much more of this are we going to have to take? Let them fuck cakes. First Lady, Mrs. Reagan. Hello, Georgia. Yes, say what's happening? <laughs> Hello, girl. Hi. Be seated. Be seated. Thank you. What the hell? Thank you. Madam Mayor, I've come here to put an end to this senseless tragedy. Well, Mrs. Reagan, we're hopelessly deadlocked on this uh, no boner issue. <laughs> As I feared. Listen, I've been discussing it with the president, and he suggests that you offer the men a partial refund, depending on how much they can't get their umbrella to open. <laughs> no, 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 Who's going to measure? Girls, girls! The matter of controls will be studied by the president's select subcommittee on small letdowns. <laughs> and he can assure you of the results. Now, how about it? I think it stinks. Girls, I'm not asking you to do this for me or for Ronald. I'm asking you to do this for your country. The eyes of a hopeful nation are turned to you in this hour of decision. Remember this. You're not just sluts. You're the lifeblood of America. <laughs> All right, you got a deal. But what if the guys don't go for it? Let them fuck cake. <laughs> What do I say to him? How should I leave? 
Tonight, we have a special treat for you. Our guest is a woman who rose from humble beginnings to become one of the world's great religious leaders, Her Holiness, Pope Millicent I. <laughs> Bless you, Rona. And please, call me Pope Millie. <laughs> Pope Millie, since becoming the first female pontiff, I understand you've made some remarkable changes in the Vatican. Is it true that you're redecorating the Sistine Chapel? <laughs> oh, and not a moment too soon. Have you seen those tacky paintings on the wall? Talk about busy. <laughs> and that ceiling. Oh, just try and get a fabric to match. So you'll be repainting then? Oh, absolutely not. We're going strictly wallpaper. <laughs> Wait till you see it. It's those cute little kids with the big eyes. Does that mean you'll be papering over some of the famous frescoes, like the Last Supper? Of course not. That's a great work of art. However, we are stenciling in place cards. <laughs> I see. And the ceiling? We're going to sandblast that sucker. Well, that will certainly change the look of the Vatican. Wait till you see the new cardinal's robes. Frankly, I wanted to go for culottes, but the guys are holding out for designer jeans. That sounds lovely. Pope Millie, I'm sure many of our Catholic viewers are wondering if you're planning on making any changes in the way the church conducts its services. Well, Rona, the Cardinals and I kicked that around a little. And we think we've come up with some modern touches. Now, take communion. This year, we're going all out for locale wafers. And if that works the way we think it will, we might try adding a simple white wine. Something unobtrusive, maybe a Chablis. <laughs> then, of course, we have our new chain of drive through confessionals. drive through Yes, we're calling it Pope in the Box. May I have your sin, please? By the time you get around to the window, all is forgiven. Your Holiness, as we all know, one of the most controversial issues surrounding the Vatican in recent years has been the matter of birth control. Yes, Rona, it has. And I think we've gotten that one beat. From now on, whenever a couple wants to make love, they'll have to get my personal permission. <laughs> I see. Your Holiness, I'm sure we're all curious as to how you've managed to deal with some of the personal problems associated with being Pope. For instance, there's the somewhat delicate matter of celibacy. Well, I have to admit my husband Al wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> but he understands my career comes first. <laughs> You're a very lucky woman. Frankly, after 20 years of marriage, you don't even notice it's gone. <laughs> Isn't it true you've had a somewhat stranger background than most popes? I mean, you've never even been a cardinal or, for that matter, priest. Yes, Rona, that's true. Uh, as you probably know, up until six months ago, I was a lounge singer at the Sahara. <laughs> Then one day, a, a bunch of guys in red suits and beanies walked in, and I'd heard the Cardinals were coming. What the heck? I thought it was the ball team. Well, they went crazy for my act. Asked to hear a couple numbers. I did some Catholic jokes. Next thing I knew, I was Pope. So you've had a fairly rapid climb to the top. Oh, not that there weren't obstacles. I mean, being a woman and being married and, of course, being Jewish. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. You're Jewish? Uh, weren't the Cardinals a little upset by that? Not half as much as my parents were. <laughs> you should see the fuss they made. Well, Your Holiness, you can see our time has run out, but we want to thank you for being with us. You know, they cut me out of their will. <laughs> And be sure to join us next week when my guest will be Benji and his new wife, actress Jill St. John. <laughs> and 
Stop tape. Thank you, Rona. That was great. Thank you. Uh, listen, Rona, if you're free this Thursday, we're having a few girls over to St. Peter's for Mahjong. <laughs> I'll have to get back to you. I mentioned Betty Davis before. You like her? Yeah, she's great. Wow. Betty Davis, check this out. Betty Davis went to see the movie E.T. She hadn't been in a movie theater for 20, 25 years. She freaks out. E.T. comes on the screen. She can't take it. She jumps up, looks at him and says, My God, he's got my eyes. <laughs> I love Betty Davis. And think about her in her whole movie career. She's always aged by her voice. You know, she aged regular, but with her voice. It went from being bubbly to bitchy to bourbon. <laughs> and remember, when she was sweet and innocent, there was no one more sweet and innocent than young Betty Davis. Oh, look at you, darling. Oh, you look swell. Oh, you got your hair cut. Whoops, you got them all cut. <laughs> and look at that pants matches that jacket. That'll be a suit. <laughs> but I'd love to kiss you, darling, but I just washed my hair. So I'm going to go upstairs now and contemplate on my brain tumor. Maybe it'll go away. The doctor says it's all in my head. <laughs> Shut up! And then, all of a sudden, Betty became 30 or 35. Whichever came first. Change. And it was at this time. It was at this time in her career that she made another movie, all about Eve, in which she talks about a woman and her career. A woman in show business. Ha! 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 Let me tell you about myself. I suppose I always wanted to be an orchestra leader. <laughs> but then I got older. My speech became slow. Whoa. <laughs> and then I made my next big movie. <laughs> Whatever happened to Baby Che? Thank you. <laughs> I start with Joan Crawford, who, by the way, on Tuesdays and Thursdays used to be Broderick Crawford. <laughs> we were the Hudson sisters. Much like the river, we too were constantly polluted. <laughs> Jay was me, Blanche was Joan. She was in a wheelchair. I wouldn't give her anything to eat, so she freaked out. <laughs> Big wheels keep on turning, turning, rolling, rolling. <laughs> Jane, darling, it's me, it's Blanche. Look, I'm, I'm thin, I'm gaunt. I'm starting to look like Faye Dunaway. It's frightening me. <laughs> Jane, Jane, if I wasn't in this chair, you could never do this to me. Jane, if I could walk and I wasn't a cripple and I wasn't in this chair, you could never do this to me. But you are in the chair, Blanche. <laughs> We're gonna get this place cleaned up. Your sister will be here any minute. Get a move on, ugly. Yeah, we never made such a fuss over her before. <laughs> she wasn't paying our rent before. And no cracks about our child made out instead of you. Yeah, he weren't no good in the sack anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Like some eggs. <laughs> Meat 
really good to be home. Just getting out of that stuffy, bloody castle is a marvel. You're talking awfully pretty these days. Not a girl Diana Williams, you know. Well, Charles brought an addiction coach. Said I couldn't talk like the common scum anymore. Hey! <laughs> oh, it's really good to see you all. I'll tell you the whole bloody truth. They're such a boring bunch. The whole bloody lot of them. And now I be talking about your in-laws. No, it's Charles too. <laughs> you mean old monkey ears? <laughs> he had him pinned back. Had to. A wind came over and almost blew him over the palace wall. <laughs> I still can't believe he thought she was a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> if I hear Tata dear off to the fox hunt one more time, I'm going to tear my bloody hair out. There are foxes everywhere. You can't turn a corner without a fox head staring you in the face. It's enough to make you bloody crazy. <laughs> How about Prince Andre? Is he still running around with that coos? Yeah, watch out for that in language. That's a name. She's a movie star and her name is Coos. Coos is her name and Coos is her game. <laughs> you whack me with that bloody thing one more time. I'll rip your lips. like a perfume that reveals all the women that I can be. That's why I spray on the light, sexy fragrance of Sybil. Sybil, all the women in me. I love to shop. I hate your shoes. Let's play tennis. I want a gin and tonic. Quiet, bitch. How can you say that to me? Thank you very much for the award. Sybil, for all the women in you. Oh, little orphans. We have never had anything. We are sad little orphans. We 
are sad little orphans. We have never had a mommy or a daddy. I don't know about Christmas trees or presents or big juicy turkeys or mistletoe. <laughs> we have never seen the Easter Bunny or had any egg hunts. We put our teeth under the pillow, but the tooth fairy never comes. <laughs> we have never had a nice cup of hot chocolate or popcorn or fresh strawberries or macadamia nuts from Hawaii <laughs> or duck l'orage or escargot. You know, somebody once told me that if you wish really hard, then you can make any wish come true. I wish I had a mommy with silky blonde hair, with skin as white as snow, and eyes as blue as the sky, and lips as red as rubies. Okay. I wish I, wish I, I may. I wish I might have a perfect mommy come tonight. Who are you? Doris Day. So look at this. I am Big Mama. Night? Honey, I am black day and night. <laughs> well, where did you come from? Oh, she's local. She must be the new cook. Hey, your mama's a cook. And I'm here to tell you what's going down today. We finally have a mom! Come on, Miss Kate. You know how much this cake costs, don't you? Come on, don't. Get away from my head. You're not blowing your nose on this, I know. Get away from me! You get off of this! It don't rub off. Put your foot on the cup. Big mom. What do you want? What, child? What? Why don't we have anything? Reaganomics, honey. <laughs> but you be glad you're not 65. <laughs> but listen to this. You got yourself, you got each other, and you got me, and I'm going to tell you the news of the street. I got to sit down, my feet hurt. Come here. <laughs> you know, a girl's life is so rough. That's why I have come here today to give you the greatest gift of all. Do you know what that gift is? The gift of the way it is. See, come Christmas time, I'm not bringing you no hockey toys that you're going to tap in a week. <laughs> or you let somebody steal it from me. That's that rich folks' job. Right on. <laughs> what about Santa Claus? What about who? Santa. Santa who? Claus. Child, ain't no Santa Claus. <laughs> Smell the roses. There is no Santa Claus. <laughs> mm -mm, that's Santa Claus' outfits. See, I know better than have some old white dude crawling down my chimney in the middle of the night, bumping over stuff. Singing all that, ho, 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 waking me up, I'll shoot him in his ass. <laughs> and I heard you talking about that tooth fairy thing. Forget about that, girl. You put a tooth on your pillow, you know what you're going to find the next morning? A rotten tooth. <laughs> well, then, who are we supposed to believe in? Bank America! <laughs> Have y'all been listening to what I'm saying? I said, you believe in yourself. Can you say that? You believe in yourself. That's right. That's good, honey. Good. Now, because you all are the only ones that can do it. And I want you always. Did I say always? Always. I want you to always remember this. Don't be no fool. Just keep your butts. Get off my cake, girl. Keep your butts in school. And just save all that money. Mm, say it with me, children. Save all that because you got lots of time for the milk and the honey. So you take the stand. Ow! Make a plan. And don't you be no fool for no man. 
Because you got your life in your own hands. And if you can't stay for nothing, you'll fall for anything. Hit me! Ow! Ow! James Brown, hit it! Ow! And that is the way it is. Say it with me now. That, that is, is the way, way it is. is. I beg your pardon? That is the way it is. <laughs> Oh, I got to get this thing fixed. Oh, another cab. You look wonderful. <laughs> Did someone wish for a mommy with ruby red lips? <laughs> Bug off, honky! Once upon a time. Well, Humpty Dumpty was not very tall. Humpty Dumpty had no hair at all. Thin little Bella, skin like vanilla. But when he played with his band, he was the sexiest guy that you ever saw. I'd be dead. One minute top. <laughs> oh. Is it 
medicine wonderful? <laughs> well, I kind of like the arts myself. <laughs> you don't understand. I want to die. I don't want to stay hooked up to this machine like an electric hot dogger. <laughs> You're the best friends I have in the whole world. And I wouldn't ask you this if I didn't think it was right. So I'm asking you to pull the plug and let me die. Okay. Okay. Achoo! <laughs> Bye. <laughs> First, there are a few things I'd like to get off my chest. You know, I really don't deserve such friendship. Hmm. Cheryl, remember when you were appointed head of the sales division, but the board of directors wouldn't give you their confirmation? That ruined my career. Who do you think sent the directors that mailgram and the picture of you in the hotel with your German shepherd? <laughs> but I didn't do that. How could you get I a wore a wig? <laughs> well, I, I guess there's no use crying over spilled milk. <laughs> Darlene. Remember when your husband ran away and he was gone for a month and you didn't know where he was and he came back and said he was kidnapped by Mexican cannibals? That was awful. Well, he wasn't. All that time we were shacking up in Tijuana. <laughs> of course, when he heard you had the breakdown, he wanted to go to the mental hospital, but I just laughed and refused to let him out of the harness. <laughs> Can you ever forgive me? These things happen. Don't worry about it. You're a saint. <laughs> Karen, my oldest and dearest friend. Remember years ago when we were working at the bank and they found $10,000 missing from the cashier's drawer and the only clue they had was an autograph picture of you? Yes, I did 10 years in prison for that. But for what? I needed a new wardrobe. Surely you know what it's like to walk around with last year's accessories. But you always visited me in prison. And didn't I look nice? It's, it's all right. I, I guess I always knew. We all knew. And you've still been my friends all these years. I am blessed. Annette! Do you remember when you had that headache last week at our bridge game? You mean before I got sick? Do you remember that extra strength Tylenol we gave you? I've been to programming for seven years. And I've seen them all. Mooney, soap opera freaks, Harry Krishnas. But you're no different. <laughs> no, you're a very sick woman. Look at you. <laughs> you're wearing enough blush to stay embarrassed for five years. And what's worse, you're hooked on selling Mary Day products. Do you know you did 22 cities in 17 days? You're a workaholic. You'd better believe it. That's why I'm the mid-regional manager for Mary Day Cosmetics. And besides, it was 21 cities. Cincinnati was personal. You know your parents are paying me a lot of money to do this. I have no parents. I disown them when they refuse to purchase the Mary Day combination package of shampoo, conditioner, and moisturizer. Shut up! No, make me! Go ahead! Try and smear my cherry blossom red non-toxic lipstick. It's impossible! <laughs> Shut up! Hey, deep programmer, did you know if you used our number five Wonder White face powder, it would eliminate those bags under your eyes? You'd look ten years younger. I said shut up! And if you used our blissful blush, it would pronounce your cheekbones, give you that Hollywood appeal. Oh. All right, you're begging for it. <laughs> First things first. No, that's my last demo, kid. I'll have to pay for a new one. Tough world, bitch. Now we're gonna go. Now we're gonna get down to the. Right
scrub stuff. We're going to scrub you naked. <laughs> please, please, no. It might take 24 hours, but I'm going to get to the base of that face. Please, please, give me a break. I went to college. I paid back my loan. Where's the eyeliner? Uh, no more looking like a raccoon. And now your face. Why, you got enough pancake there to open a Denny's. No! No, please stop! Ah! I feel fresh air hitting my face! This won't work! You might as well just give up! You'll never strike skin! I've been expecting you. <laughs> so now, I'm at the age, I'm an old lady. In about a few more days, I'm going to retire from this business. I'm 35 now. I'm about ready to call it a day, boy. I look at guys now, you know, I used to look at them and... Like, I used to look at the ass, you know? You know, when you look at a guy, what's the first thing you look at? Just what you said. The ass, don't you? <laughs> Now I don't look. Sometimes I look at me and now and I think, when can they really get down? That's what I be thinking about. <laughs> a good example. Now I'm not talking about the man who was his name Prince Charles. I can't see him working up a sweat. Y'all know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you know, I can't see him like two in the morning come on. Ow, baby, whoop it to me. Come on. Ow. I can't see the neighbors banging on the wall. Hey, cut that noise out over there. <laughs> Take that lampshade out of that girl's mouth. Get off that windowsill. What's the... <laughs> We got kids over here. Cover that girl up. <laughs> but you know who is cool to me? What's her name? Uh, Queen Elizabeth? Is she not the baddest woman in the world? I loved her. Because that man was caught in her bedroom and she went Watergate on us. I don't know how he got there. <laughs> Come on, Queenie. The castle's got 500 bedrooms, but he found her room. <laughs> Some tell you though, y'all don't tell nobody here because I get sued here. And we just talking me and you. Karen, don't tell nobody here. Okay, Miss Levin, you ain't gonna tell this. Just, just like me and you over the back fence. Don't you tell us, old girl. Okay. You remember Tom Jones, the singer? The one with the oak tree down the leg, remember? <laughs> this, is, this is good. This is so good. Please. Now, you know, I can't keep nothing. Ask my accountant. I'll tell everything I know. Well, anyhow, one of my friends, oh, I can't keep nothing. One of my friends told me, say, he, he was in Vegas and you know, he wear those tight pants and so uh the, he fainted and they took him to the hospital one of my friends is a nurse and she said when they brought him in and stuff and said they took off his pants say he had toilet paper rolled down now <laughs> say the thing was that big i cried <laughs> Tom Jones, that's all he had i was pissed girl i bought me a new color tv and that's all i was looking at <laughs> so this is what my, my agent say uh my attorney will say he gonna be back at mgm in in april Right down front where y'all miss them years. And you know, I'm going to see him. So when he starts screaming and hollering and pulling, I'm going, yeah, baby, squeeze the charmant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Of all the living creatures on Earth, the mayfly has the shortest life. The average lifespan of the adult mayfly is only five hours. Remember 11 a.m.? <laughs> Boy, those were the days. I sure was a pretty thing. Remember what Papa used to say? No, neither do I. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Hi, Adepo. Hey, hey, Trudy, where are you? 
expression too. Well, I'm late for school. I already missed the second grade. <laughs> well, you'd better run along then. Okay, but Grandma, are you gonna come to my college graduation? When's that? In ten minutes. <laughs> Afraid not, girl. I never like to plan that far ahead. <laughs> you tell us all about it. Okay, Grandma. See you later. Bye. I'll tell you, Ethel. Kids today have it too easy. No spunk. They don't make them like they used to. Remember when we were kids? Yes. The sun was over there. <laughs> to understand a thing like that. Oh, no way. Remember when garbage was only a nickel a gallon? <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Hi, Beppo. This is Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> I met him in college. <laughs> yeah, we're getting married. We've been going together for six minutes. <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Yeah. <laughs> well, good luck to you both. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? Oh. I remember my honeymoon. Oh, yeah. 11.30 a.m. Oh, it's like it was yesterday. Yes, they played the anniversary waltz. I wonder if they finished playing it yet. <laughs> Hi, Grandma. Hi, Aunt Ethel. Guess what? I'm preggy. <laughs> About time! Well, see you later. <laughs> Bye. Remember when we used to land on shit? <laughs> and we'd stay there all day. Hi, Grandma. Hi, Aunt Ethel. Have you met Lucy? She's our eldest. Hiya! <laughs> you look just like your mom. No. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to go through puberty. <laughs> Do it outside. Okay. <laughs> well, Ethel, I guess it's about time. Yes, can't live forever. Only one thing I regret. Watch that. I would have liked to have lived to see the Carson show. <laughs> well, such is life. I've waited forever to sit here. <laughs> yeah, sure feels good. <sighs> John. Yes, Trudy. Do you remember two o'clock? Yeah. And what your grandma used to say? No. Me do I. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And now, once again, the girls of the comedy store. Melissa Harrison.
Victor might be hungry. Here, you want an egg? Mom, you're well, maybe, embarrassing Maybe you'd like a little champagne here. I got the sock. You want that? Mom, I told you not to come here when I'm working. Honey, come you were on. the best. You were the best in the whole show, believe me. Look, I, I took a lunch with Lou Wasserman over at Universal today. Mom. Yeah, he likes eggs, you know. No, anyway, but... he's talking about a three-picture deal. I think you'd be interested. No, I don't oh, want you listen, here. By the way, honey, can you play a man? What? Honey, you've got a lot of talent. You could do it. No. There's, there's only two sexes. If you're acting, you got to act like something different. I don't daughter. want you here. You're ruining my life. <laughs>